Hi there. Today I'm going to start a new series on uh, how to work with Panda data frames. Panda data frames, if you are uh, working with data science or uh, data engineering, it's going to be something that you will have to get used to and you have to learn. One of the most frequent uh, operations that you have to do with Panda data frames is to read CSV files and to write CSV files. So this is going to be my first episode on this topic. And the first thing we're going to do is going to learn how to read and write CSV files using Panda data frames. Without further ado, let's get started. Reading a CSV uh, from a file is a very simple affair and something that you are likely to do many times. As an example, let's read an image data set of all the paintings I could find about the nativity. I will not go into uh, detail on how I was able to gather this data set, but if you are curious, I've created the video showing how I gather these images using uh, Panda data frames and uh, Beautiful Soup. You can find the link to that video in the description. Let's first import the pandas library so we can read our CSV. Now that we've imported the pandas library, let's just take a quick look at the method that we're going to use. For that, we're going to use the Python help function that will give me some information about the actual method that I'm going to use. So in this case, we'll be read CSV. As you can see, the documentation for this method is quite extensive. I'm not going to speak about each parameter in this method. I'll leave that to you as an exercise. The main thing you should uh, understand is that first thing you need to pass in is a file path to the file that you want to read, the CSV file. All the other parameters we will depend on the use case. So for now, I'm just going to uh, use a very simple uh, definition of read CSV. Uh, I'll, and I will um, I'll read the CSV file. But before I do that, because I'm using Google Colab, um, and I advise you to use that too, so you don't have to worry about setting up your Python development environment if you just want to learn, I'm going to upload the CSV to Google Colab. So let's read this file. As you can see, I was able to, uh, to read the, the CSV file quite easily. And uh, we can already see that this CSV file has uh, three columns. Uh, ignore the index. This is just the index of each row. So we have an image URL, a web page URL, and a column that doesn't seem to have any data called labels. That easy, right? You will notice that I use the display function to show the panda data frame, and it looks quite nice and easy to read. If I had used the print function on the other hand, it wouldn't have looked so nice. I'll just show you what I mean. Much uh, harder to, to read that, isn't it? So if I did something like this, what happened there? The Python notebook called the display function for us because it was the last value in the Python block. If I had another line after this, like this one, it wouldn't have worked. As you can see, it no longer displays the table. So this is a convention that you might, it might be useful or not, depending where you want to display this panda data frame. So if you know it, you can actually add it at the very bottom of the block. You don't need to actually uh, type display. We were able to read um, a CSV file and create a panda data frame with it quite easily. In this case, it, I don't really actually want this, uh, these column names. So I'm, I'm going to just uh, use an additional option in the read CSV uh, method that allows me to specify my own column names. So you see, I was able to specify my own column names and that's what you see now here, but there's something wrong. I still have uh, the column names from the CSV file itself. It's actually quite easy to get rid of them. So let me just uh, try this again. So you specify header equal to zero. This means that it will not uh, consider the header in the CSV file. So 
as you can see, the header is gone. And we have here the columns that we, we wanted in the first place. So this is almost perfect, but I don't really see what's the point of having a, a labels column without any information on it. So I'm going to drop this column. You can see now that the precise labels column is gone. And uh, it's worth noticing that uh, I was able to modify the Panda data frame itself, which means it's a mutable object. And it's worth uh, having that in mind, that you can modify the Panda data frame and you don't have to always create a new, uh, a new variable to hold the new version of the Panda data frame. Okay, so now that I've um, into the column. Uh, I want to actually uh, create a new CSV file with this column. To do that, it's as simple as it was to read it. So I just have to use the two CSV method, which has lots of options. You can check the documentation for more options. But for me, all I want is this method for now, the, this uh, parameter, this, the, the file path. You'll notice I don't actually specify the full path because uh, I, I am just going to create the file in the current working directory. Let's see if the, if the new CSV is there. You see the file here? So let's take a quick look. So this is the actual new CSV. And you can see that it holds my new uh, column names. And also uh, it doesn't have the labels column which was empty before. That was easy, right? There's a lot more we can do with pandas and CSVs, but I'm sure that this is actually enough to get you started. And that will be all for now. So happy coding!